of celebration, of contemplation, and deliberation. We seek your guidance. We seek your blessing. We give you thanks that another school year is behind us. For those who have matriculated, Lord, be with them as they um, enter a new phase of life. Give rest to our teachers and administrators. And bless us all in our Lord's name. Amen. 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 Next up, I'd like to ask Principal Kazen from Croatan High School to come forward um, and recognize the Croatan High School 4x400 team state champions. This is sheer. All right. Um, we have uh, quite a few of them have already started leadership academies. Um, and so they are not with us tonight, but um, coaches. So the um, men's 4x400 four relay state champions, Luke Nick, Elias, and Matthew Spay, Braden Stevens, and Cooper Stevens, which they are, like I said, they're at Leadership Academies. And I, I'd also like to add that Braden Stevens um, was the Big Rock uh, teaching fellow from Sydney. Oh. So, so. Yeah. Our other relay team was the 4x800 who is Trey Austin here tonight, uh, Luke Nicolaisen, Matthew Spade, and senior James Wallace. James is heading off to High Point next year to run. So, congratulations. Congratulations. And of course, our coaches, uh, Andy Volfer, Rico Kitabe, and Neil Wallace. Um, they were also recognized at the state level this year for Coach of the Year and the Conference Coaches of the Year. Yeah, fantastic team. Everyone's, no one had any good at They're busy, busy yeah. guys. Yes, they are. Two of them are at the state of the for leadership right now. Awesome. <laughs> Okay. Yes, ma'am. I know Travel Travis. Thank you. Kay, you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good meeting. Yeah. 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 I'm back to the phone. Right. 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 <laughs> so, listen, so it's my, my pleasure to introduce you to our ladies with cross team. <laughs> this team has only been in existence, this is the fourth year, and so we decided to go for the gold and go <laughs> um, but they competed at the state championship this year for the first time in the school's history and one of the exciting games was Clayton Durham and uh, it was a fun, fun, fun game to watch. Super proud of these ladies. They are, uh, and I fully expect they'll probably be there again next year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, double up. There we go. Let's them. I don't have to stop. Let's go one. Good picture. Thank you. Just kidding. <laughs> Yes, great job. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Jody's on it tonight. She is. She's spicy tonight. Are you spicy tonight? Are you spicy tonight? Next up, we, with West Carter at High School, we have the track state champions with Coach Marshall Windsor. I can introduce Bruce and Lady won four consecutive two indoor, two outdoor this year with Tyler Tyler. That is awesome. Then I would like to introduce our four by 1600 meter relay team, which is also a four by four relay team. Tyler runs the leg of that relay. Next is Ryan Germain. Ken Blue. And then there's Gilbert. Now these four were the outdoor state champion. Indoors we had Tyler, Ryan, and Grace, and they were joined by Isabella Manella. In middle school. Uh-huh. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have some incredible athletes. Jody. Jody. Blair's coming. Yeah. Some Blair. <laughs> Next up is item 2.1. Do I have a motion to approve the meeting agenda? Item two on the consent agenda to a new item two point one for approval after the closed session. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Goodwin. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, I have a second by Mr. Day. I'm sorry, do I have a motion to approve the amended agenda? I have a motion. Yes. I have a motion by Mr. Goodwin. Do I have a second? That's what I'll second. I have a second by Mr. Day. All in favor, raise your right hand. Unanimous. All right. Next up is our public comment. Any president tonight wishing to make comments should have filled out a request to speak public comment form. To ensure civil team relevance and time management, there are specific requirements for public comments set forth in school board policy. They include comments are limited to matters pertaining to public education. The speaker shall state his or her name at the beginning of his or her comment. Speaking time will be limited to three minutes per person. A three-minute timer will appear on the TV screens in the bottom corner. The timer will beep when there are 30 seconds remaining. It will then beep the final time when your time is up. For civility and decorum, no speaker shall make obscene remarks or issue public or issue personal attacks or insults. No complaint against a school employee or student will be permitted, although this may be heard in closed session at a later date following consultation with the superintendent. 
Much information about individual students, including a speaker's own child, is confidential under state and federal law, and we discourage and often prohibit such information in open session. The chairperson may immediately terminate any comments that violate these rules. Board members will not respond to questions except occasionally to request clarification. With that introduction, our first speaker tonight will be Mr. Eugene Thompson. I am Eugene Thompson. Tonight, the school bus driver. I began driving the school bus in the past four years as a substitute driver for Newport Middle and branched out the West Carter Road. In February, I was fortunate to begin driving my own route for wet. As a sub driver, you move from bus to bus and route to route. The difficult part is not knowing the route, the stops, or the riders. There are numerous house stops where you cannot find the house number on the mailbox or on the house. You're driving a bus, trying to follow a multi-page document of route instructions, and trying to keep an eye on what is happening on the road and the bus. There are not enough substitute drivers. There are often afternoons at web where two or more drivers were out and multiple buses were taking on additional students where second runs were needed. Assistance is needed in regard to making things easier for substitute drivers and increasing their numbers. Secondly, I'd like to say thank you for giving my daughters and the other students of Marine Science and Technology's Early College High School the opportunity to participate and graduate from this cooperative, innovative high school experience. This program is a bright fit for my daughters and for a huge number of their classmates. Mass has no future as a school, but it has a past, and it has a legacy that will continue to grow as its student body and graduates succeed in life. <laughs> May the light of the math beacon shine forevermore. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, I have Emily Thompson. Good evening, my name is Emily Thompson, that's Kat, we may be related. I'm a co-graduate of Marine Science and Technology's Early College High School. Over the past few years, MESS was closed in several times and closed permanently on September 6, 2022. Through all the uncertainty surrounding MESS and the pandemic, I persevered. Just over a month ago, 16 of my classmates and I graduated from Carter Community College. Several more of my classmates got trade certificates. Personally, I graduated and was an associate in arts and associate in science. Almost three weeks ago, Mass held its second and final graduation. I earned my high school diploma two weeks after I graduated with two college degrees. Mr. Paylor, I'll try to remember it tonight. <laughs> Mass gave me and my classmates so many opportunities that future students in the county should have, but no longer can. I love my time at Mass, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to have been able to have gone, but I wish that like the other 97 counties in North Carolina that have one, Carter County still had an early college. I would like to give one last part in thought. The next time you decide to open a school, maybe think that, would I like to close the school in five years and save those students the heartbreak of having their school close? Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, do I have a motion to approve the amended consent, consent agenda? Uh, amended. Okay, I have a motion by Ms. Goodman. Do I have a second? I second that. All right, and I have a second by Mr. Jenkins. All in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, I have Mr. Mike McKay and Ms. Marcia Sarkin and Cindy Berry to, did I miss something? No. Okay. Everybody I thought I was looking at me crazy. Um, they are going, we're going to receive digital teaching and learning update from those three. Cindy Berry is new to our county, but very 
to lab, addition to our panel, and part of what's been approved in our desperate the budget for our teacher real learning here. Uh, these new folks really be powerful in our tools this past year. Many times we get called here in the office, and we can follow things that I wish I was able to do on a daily basis. But we want to share just a story of our journey this past year, because we feel like it's been a really good one, and I hope you see the excitement that we'll show you throughout this. But um, as we do that, we'll tie that all to a digital learning tool. So last summer, the state approved the digital learning plan, and it was all involved around student learning experience. And that included leadership and vision, human capacity, curriculum instruction, data privacy and cybersecurity, and then infrastructure and devices. So technology is a lot more than just giving you a Chromebook and an iPad. It revolves around a lot of working and moving parts to really enhance that student experience. So everything that we talk about today is going to have a little pie in the corner, and it's all going to be related to this right here to enhance the student experience. So keep that in mind as we show you some great things next year. So we'll look at some of the boring things first because we're going to talk about the kids secondary. But we've been able to provide new laptops, Chromebooks, iPads for all students and staff. County this past year. Um, ECF, or Emergency Connectivity Funding, through the EWA and the FCC program, we provide Chromebooks for our high schools and also by the elementary school that have the oldest Chromebooks in our system. Also, iPads for pre K, kindergarten, and first grade, and 50 hot spots for students who may not have that connectivity. Again, no false stress is answered. S for funding. Be able to provide our staff laptops. That's everybody from our HVAC workers to our cafeteria workers to our superintendent to our teachers. Everybody in that is able to get a new laptop. Much needed. Those were five years old. Go on that. If you do anything about technology, five years. It's a pretty old laptop. Um, also, the remaining Chromebooks where they can come out of ESSER funding for the rest of our schools. Our two digital learning coaches. Well, the technicians for West Carter High School are the largest school, and we've been able to see just this year a team alone be able to service every ticket at that school. And those are only the things that got put in that he had time to do. Students coming in for the first time, other than doing the TF to alleviate some of that. Also, the ITF at Atlantic Elementary School that hasn't had an ITF or media coordinator really since we moved in down east middle. And just the side of school, we haven't been able to provide it with purpose with this little rate. Also, e rate funding, the behind the scenes, um, if you will, over half of our switches. That's kind of the behind the scenes where everything connects, if you will, the airport hub for the technology that makes everything else work. Those are in place that all of our schools, half of the total fleet during the 2023 school year. And then this summer and this fall, all elementary, middle, and high school will have their access points placed. That's the wireless component that makes from the switch to actually the wireless connectivity that you have. All of those will be in place. Again, all out of any rate funding and no cost. When we talk about cybersecurity and data privacy, I thought we'd start with the boring stuff, um, but it's really not boring to us because these are the things that keep our students' data safe. And we use a program called MIS Before, training for all of our staff. It allows us to have training, first of all, then fishing campaigns, which are getting really good. If you've had some fishing lately and some of the things that we send out, they're really close because we even use some similar graphics in those to see if folks click on those things. And then from that, we're able to have um, analyzation of that data and look at remediation where we need that. And then this summer, we're working with student data privacy, and we're looking at all of the programs that we buy as a There be a web um, service, software platform, to see what kind of data privacy does the student, that company, have with their data. Last thing we want to do is to be anywhere where we're trusted with student data, and we have a breach in that because of the student software or application. So you're probably wondering, what do they do over here? We are in every school all the time. We serve every school in Florida County. And part of that is through coaching centers. 
but it's not exactly like the coaching cycles like your curriculum coaches have. It's more of we are working with the ITFs and the media coordinators in the schools to grow them so that they can grow their teachers and all of the all of the workers in that building. Campus. So we work directly with them. And part of that is giving them goals, giving, helping them reflect, helping them set goals, helping them grow, working together, co-teaching, um, helping them set um, a vision, help, them help their teachers set a vision, all those things. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about is revolving around us helping different people throughout the school system meet them where they are and help them grow. So we started the year off, you know, Bright Ideas is a really popular event here in Carteret County because they really support us. And we started off, that's a great way to reach out to the staff if you're a media coordinator or an ETF because Bright Ideas grants support innovation. So we said, okay, here is some really great tips for writing grants. We helped our ITS media coordinators with this process, gave them the tools that they needed to help their staffs write grants in the same respect, and that just kicked off a ton of other things. So our digital teaching and learning team all together wrote 53,000 and won, was awarded over $53,000 of the grants this year. And most of those grants were like unsupported by the community, which we really appreciate. Um, like Mike said, this is my first year in Murray County. I'm a retired educator and have retired to what the newspaper said last week is the greatest place in North Carolina to be, and I absolutely agree with it. And I feel so blessed to be part of Murray County. It is the best school system that I have ever worked in. It is top notch, and I feel so so happy to be here. So thank you for having us tonight. When I think about instruction and where we want to go, we want to be state of the art, we want to be as current as we can be, we want to be up to date. And when I think about an instructional hub of a school, the first words that come to my mind, and I hope yours, are going to be the media center. That's where we're going to have supportive materials for the teachers and the students, and um, we want that place to be a fun hub, an instructional hub, and a place where learning takes place. So as we were thinking through this year of where we could guide and send and help at our media centers and our media specialists, we were following the North Carolina DPI model impact guideline for media centers. And with that, it has guidelines about the number of books that you should have per student, as well as the um, age of your collection. So for a minimum standard for the number of books is 10 books per student, and an outstanding um, is 20 books. All of our schools across the county are in the outstanding category with our number of books per student. Every school has at least 20 or more books per student. But there still is work to be done with that because we need to address the age factor of our materials in the library. So the standard is if you're 10 years from the current year, then you're outstanding. If you're 16 years or more, then you would be less than standard. And we started this school year with uh, all the schools in involved, and we had a year, a, a copyright year, of 2001. We've worked on weeding, we've worked with the media specialists on how to weed books, and now we're at 2002. So as a district, we've grown one year, but we still need to continue that growth pattern so that we can have the most current books in our libraries. Um, the school media, so we're following your school board policy 3200 that says that we need to have an MTAC, Media Technology Advisory Council. And so we created those within the schools. It's the principal or assistant principal, media, ITF, and grade level representatives that try to guide the media center at each school to determine the needs of the individual schools. So we have created those teams this year. And with that team, they created, with the media specialist, collection development plans. And that is the plan the school is going to use to move forward with developing their library. And the first time, the first year we're doing this, we said, let's write a three-year plan. Because this is the first time the, these people have done that. So we've written a three-year plan. Each school wrote their plan. And we're in the process now of, of going down that path of that three-year plan. And after that, we follow with a five-year plan moving forward. Um, so we've been working on weeding. And now we need to see what we can do to try to find some books to replace those that have been weeding. 
Marsha and I came here maybe two or three days and grinded it out, and we wrote grants for every school in the district. But unfortunately, we weren't funded. But we wrote good grants. Mm -hmm. But we were able to um, identify some FEMA Hurricane Florence monies to the tune of about $155,000 to replace books in the individual schools. Those books have been ordered. Um, Parker's Island has already received all of their books, and we're waiting this summer for the rest of the to trickle in. Marcia and I will be going to the school to check them in so the invoices can be paid at the time. We also had some shelving damages, primarily in four schools, Morgan, um, Elmingland Creek, Red Primary, Newport, and West Carteret. And those were direct, directly impacted by the storm as well. So, we have gotten the quotes. Thank you for approving that in your consent agenda. That was to the tune of $190,000. And Mike said we could order those tomorrow. So that's wonderful. I'm really excited about that. Um, for the first time in Carteret County, we held an elementary battle of the books. And um, Newport Middle, I mean Newport Elementary, excuse me, was came out on top of that and represented us in the southeast region. And um, they were looking for a host. Mike Vollen <laughs> Voluntold Carteret County. And we partnered with the Boys and Girls Club and Morehead Elementary and used both of the campuses and held the Southeast Region competition. We had eight school systems coming into our district. And I will tell you, Christy Probst is the real deal. She is that and a bag of chips. She remains her monster schedule. Rooms on that um, auxiliary um, hallway that fed right into the Boys and Girls Club. She could not have been better as well as the folks at the Boys and Girls Club. And she had a rank plan. I mean, it's just great. She was really great to work with. And we also had the Middle School Battle of the Books. We've done that years past. Newport Middle School won that competition, and they traveled to Goldsboro for their regional competition. So we feel like some good things are going on in the media centers, and we feel like we've got some forward momentum, and we're just going to keep on going with it. Awesome. One thing that we were able to do this year is um, DPI held a coding day, and it was with the North Carolina Legislators, and we were able to take five teams from Carteret County to, be, to represent us in this day of code with other school districts across the state. And while we were there, we had legislators, our state superintendent, Catherine Truitt, members of DPI, and then some executives from code.org were there to be present to celebrate this great day. So we're real proud of our students that were able to travel to Raleigh and showcase what we're doing here in the East. So again, every time, everything that's come out of this has been us reaching out to our team. How can we help you? How can we make your job better? How can we um, be your boots on the ground? And Allison Guthrie reached out and said, Marsha, I really like sorority bonds. I really like a grant for sorority bonds. And a lot of our Delaney schools, well, Atlantic, they have been in MTF for years. They only have one. Um, but a lot of our Delaney schools, those ITFs hold multiple roles. And Allison is a reading special. Yeah. Um, media coordinator, she does all the things. Even though this is a smaller school, she still has a lot of different jobs and spread them. She's like, can you help me find some funding for her insights? And then I'm like, you know, they could really use something smart. I'm like, yeah, I could add part of that in Atlantic as well. So I started looking for some for grants and fund sources, and it was about I had about fall grants. So I made some phone calls, called Tabby. I was like, it would be great to give us some money. She's like, I think we could probably get some work through the foundation together. So um, he said, come in with a plan. And I was like, to Kent. <laughs> we I put a plan together of a great starter kit because I really felt like they, this was a, a, a not, it was just a deficit. They really needed these materials to do good quality print to start there. So every school down east, um, through the generosity of the foundation and Tavi Chadwick here, um, got we got funding for robots for robots for coding, for Lego kits for coding, as well as five hundred dollar per school for STEM related and digital citizen related literature. And that just wasn't here to take these materials. It came with coaching, co-teaching. I planned with them. 
we, we're starting a database of STEM activities that they can do with the different books. And we have just had a ball. I've really enjoyed working with them. And I think that, um, you know, Miss Debbie, she might not retire for a long time. Good. So, um, I really appreciate your generosity, and um, it's just been it's been really fun. They were, they were like, it's like Christmas, and we just really enjoyed it. Yeah, that this year, we really talked to our team about refocusing on their core identity and cultural leadership. I'll be honest with you, I think our identity as community coordinators have been in some state of emergency and or relearning how they do everything, and helping everybody in the building with that. You know, we have ITS, 15 media coordinators, really focusing on the daily tasks that they have. We saw a lot of administrators tasks from either directing other things that took them out of their classroom away from directing, helping teachers, teaching students. Um, so we started a conversation about coaching and how to help empower our educators um, when looking at our luminous learners and our engaging environments. We see hesitation, not really because of the lack of commitment, Look for lack of comfort in where they can do that. So part of that, we got to the grant writing again. Um, we looked at some growth opportunities um, that they gave us from feedback, and we collaboratively wrote a digital learning initiative grant to take place throughout the entire year this coming school year. And we could go this past Monday, the State Board of Education approved that $3,000 grant. We could do one of um, only four of those in the state, and the only one in the East. Marks and Finn will share some of the things that we'll be working on with us during the day. So these are the digital learning competencies for our coaches. And um, we're Marcia and I will begin working with the ITFs and the media coordinators on these competencies so that they can become experts at their school level and then they in turn help their students. I mean their own teachers. Students. We're going to use some book studies. We're going to have some coaching training workshops. We're going to do coaching cycles. And then there'll be state and national networking opportunities for these people at the school level. So what we are doing is it's we're leaders in our district and we're leader in our region. We're leaders in our region for coaching. Um, we are hosting a, a hub for coaching for everyone in the Eastern. But for our people, our digital teaching and learning people, specifically, we're looking at data-driven decision makers, digital citizen advocates, connected learners, change agent, collaborator, professional learning facilitator, learning designer. It's more again, than just giving the kid a Chromebook and giving a teacher a laptop. Technology accelerates all practices, good and bad. And if we can get our, our digital teaching and learning team on board with these coaching standards, then we're going to accelerate the best. Well, we just thank you for your support. As you can see, our journey has been a long one. It's taken us down many different paths this year. Um, but I think it's been a very productive journey. Um, I don't credit that to myself. I credit that to our folks that work in the department, um, our ITFs, and our media coordinators, our digital coaches. Um, they are the ones that make that work go. Um, and many times, a lead for a technical side and the instructional side, when it doesn't work, I'm taken out of the instructional side because it's going to work. These folks have been able to bring that bridge, that gap back forth. Again, thank you for your support of those extra positions uh, in that. And I can't just imagine the work without that and the work that we've been able to do this year. If you have any questions, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your passion. Just, uh, it gives me sort of fired up. I don't know what you're talking about, but your passion just not, you know, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for what you do for our teachers and our ultimately our kids. So appreciate y'all. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Price, we heard how great your life is. Once you get on that. Yes. I did see him not oh, exciting. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> in case somebody sees this, <laughs> I'm going to go home. Um, so before you, I have a few policies. Uh, the second three policies, these policies are first come from 
Uh, the local council board associated with spring 2023 packet. These particular policies just have minor editorial divisions. There's nothing of substance to those policies. Any change in the second read, we have to answer any questions you may have about that. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the policies for second read as presented? Motion to consider the policy. Consider. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the second read of this particular policy. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Jenkins. Do I have a second? Second. And a second by Ms. Chadwick. All in favor, raise your right hand. Unanimous. on existing requirements um, in our current policies. Uh, since it's going three, I'll quickly highlight two of them. Uh, one policy, 40, 33, 33, pregnant and parenting students and employees. This policy has a revision that expands the language in the policy to include uh, new requirements included for pregnant employees under the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act and home walk out lives, or Nursing Mothers Act. So, it really just goes into reasonable accommodations for those individuals that are employees that are pregnant at the time. Um, and then policy 6315, which uh, is entitled drivers. Um, that revision expands the scope of the policy to cover all drivers that operate any vehicle in the course of carrying out their employment duties. So the policy previously pertained to um, bus drivers. And so this actually applies to anyone who is driving at county. Basically, it. Do you have any questions about this policy? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Thank you. And now we have Ms. Kathy Carswell, budget, budget revision number six. Good evening. Um, lots of program budget revision number six for the 22 23 fiscal year. Um, the first budget revision is. Funds, um, and I'll start with that. Um, the first one is to appropriate additional funds that we received um, for July and October interest that goes into the technology fund. Uh, appropriate additional funds for a leading camp. Appropriate additional funds for the performance bonus. Appropriate additional funds for the literacy intervention funds. Uh, transfer from the CTE months of employment to CTE supplies of materials. Appropriate funds received for fuel and equipment contingency and the transfer of funds back to the textbook. Uh, the total state budget amendment is $63,692. The next budget revision is a federal budget revision. The first one is uh, a budget transfer to match how that we're actually spending the fund and to also record the sales tax for the fund. The next is an allot the allotment was greater than the planning allotment and also to record the sales tax refund. The next is the allotment again was greater than the planning allotment and also we recorded the sales tax refund. Next is the allotment again was greater than the planning allotment. Um, next is actually a reduction in allotment and that was for our year funds. And another um, small reduction in allotment and it was gear funds as well. And the next is we reported our sales tax refund and appropriated funds received for psychological bonuses and then additional funds received for principal growth bonus. The total amount of the federal budget amendment was $194,721.97. The next budget revision was a special revenue fund and this was to record the additional NC pre-K revenue that we received during the year and to align the budget based on how the funds were being expended. Uh, the total budget revision was 
$4,423.33. With a total budget deviation of $438,837.36. That is budget provision number six. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carson. Does anyone have any questions? Revision number six as presented. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Goodwin and a second by Ms. Mall. All in favor, raise your right hand. Unanimous. Next up is item 7.1 for our consideration for a four-year appointment to Carter Community College Board of Trustees. Letters of interest for consideration for the four-year appointment to Carter Community College Board of Trustees were submitted by the following individuals on or prior to May 2nd, 2023 deadline and they have been distributed to the board members for review. Dr. Larry Wayne Gracie, Bill Henderson, and William Rogers. Do I have a motion to appoint... Yes. yes, Madam Chair, I would like to reappoint Bill Henderson for that position to end 2027. Okay, I have a motion for Mr. Bill Henderson. I will second. I have a second. I have a second by Mr. Jenkins. All in favor, raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Mr. Bill Henderson will serve another four-year term in June 30th, 2027. Next up is item 7.2, consider appointment to the Carter County, Carter Community College Board of Trustees unexpired term. Letters of interest for the unexpired term ending June 30th, 2026 on the Carter Community College Board of Trustees were submitted by the following individuals prior to the May 23rd, 2023 deadline and distributed to the board members for review. Um, Otis Morton Congleton, Dr. Larry Wayne Gracie, William Rogers, and Colleen Wilden. Do I have a motion or do I have a motion to appoint? Yes, absolutely. I move to appoint yes. Mr. William Rogers to the Carteret County the Carteret Community College Board of Trustees for the unexpired term ending June 30th, 2026. Okay. I have a motion by Ms. Statler. Do I have a second for Mr. Rogers? I'll second that. And a second by Ms. Mall. All in favor, raise your right hand. And that is unanimous as well. Mr. Rogers will serve um, the unexpired term. Next up, we have Mr. Richie Paler with our bond projects. And then after that, you can roll on to your superintendent comment. Thank you. Um, so we just started a brand new project yesterday, and that is at Broad Creek Middle School. So the kids were out, got out Friday, and then we were ready to roll yesterday. And that work started in the cafeteria area. They're there, uh, uh, started demo in that area to, to expand the cafeteria. Um, we know that it won't be complete by the time the kids get back, but we're going to try to get as much done this summer as we can. Um, and then the, the next phase of that project will be the, the classroom addition in the back. At Crowlton High School, um, that project is still um, moving along nicely. It's on schedule. Right now they're installing uh, ceiling tiles throughout the building. Um, they actually have the HVAC up and running in that building and trying to pull the moisture out um, and of the, the floor so that we can install the flooring later. Um, the pavement outside is, is being uh, laid and sidewalks are in, so that, that project is coming along nicely. At um, the Carter Preschool Center, um, we're a little behind on that project. They, we had to do some, um, they had to go back and repaint the whole inside of the building. There were some issues with the paint. Um, we still will be finished by the time um, kids come back, but, but that project is behind a couple weeks. Um, and they're also waiting on the pavement um, that's going to be in the front. Um, last is security walls at um, Beaufort Middle at East Carter, Downey's Middle in Smyrna, and Moorhead City Middle School. Um, the walls are up. Um, we're waiting on doors that we hope to come in by midsummer that will complete those projects. And they're also doing some coping and things there, some finish work. But for the most part, the, the grunt work is over. Um, and then at Moorhead Elementary School, those footings will start soon. And um, we hope that we, we anticipate that project all those projects will be complete by the time kids come back so at curl tan um uh, cpc and security laws we anticipate all those projects will be done before school starts back in the fall the only project that should be ongoing at that time will be broad creek middle school okay and i'll roll into comments sir 
Good evening. I'd like to give another thank you to all the sponsors that supported our employee event last month. Um, those are Curtis Chevrolet, Carter County Farm Bureau, James Clean, Frank Door Company, Height and Associates, Curtin and Wifford Law Firm, and Remax Ocean Properties. So I went to and how proud we were to announce them all. I'd like to congratulate all our seniors that graduated last Friday. It was nice to see all the families and support for our graduates at the high school events. I wish those seniors much success in their future endeavors. Our cash camp started yesterday at East Carter High School and cash stands for agriculture, construction, and health science. Um, we offer two sessions this year running consecutively through June 22nd. Simultaneously, we have class camp, and class stands for Career and Leadership Academy for Student Success. Um, that's for a select group of high school students, and that will also run through the same period. Students will participate in a life project at Crawford High School, as well as other events uh, at various business environments throughout the county. Um, please note that the regularly scheduled board meeting will be Tuesday, August 1st at 6 p.m. We will also have a special call board meeting. June 27th to close out our year in finances, and it will be formally announced in the coming weeks. Summer break has finally started, so we'd like to wish all our families and, and friends uh, a safe and happy summer, um, and we look forward to getting our students back on Monday, August the 28th of 2023. So, Ms. Chair, this concludes my comments. Thank you. Do I have any additional comments? I have some. Okay. Like to say, um, so many of you that I have not been explored this new year. Um, prior to that, I spent a lot of time with the other side of the podium. It's five years, five for mast. I just want to make a couple of comments to the students, the staff, teachers, principals, everyone that wrote the hardest that helped me that school that it was. I'm, I'm sad that Carter at Campbell doesn't have any. I'm so proud of what the students and the staff have done over the five years. Um, they graduated on May 24th. Congratulations to them. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Ms. Rosen. Thank you, Mr. Pelletti. Everyone that was a teacher, a, a staff member, whatever, the, the parents. Goodness, I don't know that I've ever seen passionate parents. And it took every single one of them good, bad, and ugly. They came together. You students will be amazing in everything you do because of the trials that you have had to endure, which I hate you had to do that. Um, includes COVID and things that are a little bit beyond your control. But just know you noticed. I saw you every step of the way. I'm proud of you every step of the way. And I continue to sing your praises throughout the rest of what you accomplish. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I also wanted to commend you um, for coming up. And, and I, know, I know, just like Ms. Moss said, it's been tumultuous for you guys. And, and it's impressive to see what you've accomplished. And I appreciate you coming here tonight and standing up and, and showing what you have accomplished and standing up for your, your other counterparts as well. So with that being said, our, um, I'll repeat what Mr. Paylor said, but our next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting will take place Tuesday, August 1st, 2023 at 6 p.m. There will be no regularly scheduled board meeting in July. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, uh, session. Second that. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Goodwin and a second by Ms. Statler. We are now in closed session.